Ladies and gentlemen, Woo. welcome to GQ, a wrestling podcast. Yes. Episode 42. 42. Uh, currently, we are watching the Battle of the Willies. So stupid. On All Elite Wrestling. That's it so is dumb. Bill Ocean, I mean, Will Ospreay. Bill get Ocean it, Spray. Get it right. Against Powerhouse Willie Will Hobbs. Hobbs. Willie Hobbs. Uh, <clears throat> We got a lot of shit to cover, so we are gonna just jump in feet first, not head, uh, not head first, not head first. Uh, so, brief synopsis of what we're going to be covering. First, we're gonna do twenty to one on the Bleacher Report countdown, mm-hmm. which we've been doing the last couple three weeks, uh, and then mm-hmm. we are going to cover both nights one and night. Two mm-hmm. in their own little segments. Uh, we're gonna throw out some predictions, mm-hmm. but uh, and you know we also have that documentary that happened this past week too. Yeah, <clears throat> we have the uh, becoming immortal oh. Bray Wyatt story. It's gonna be hard. Uh, so we're just gonna jump right in, and here we go. We have made such amazing progress on this podcast journey and are pumped to share our first sponsor with you guys tonight, Dubby Energy. Dubby is on a mission to change the game and create a better future for energy drinks, and we are so excited to partner with them. Dubby is your taste buds' favorite energy drink that comes with all the good stuff and none of the crash. Formulated with vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including their patented NeuroFactor. Dubby gives you clean energy and laser focus without any fillers, maltodextrin, or anti-fischial colors. Just mix one scoop with eight ounces of cold water and you're ready to tackle the, whatever the day throws at you. Even better, Dubby ships worldwide. So whatever corner of the world you're listening to us from, you can enjoy it too. With some awesome flavors and growing flip following, see what all the buzz is about and get on board with the clean energy movement. Try it today with our exclusive promo code available to all GQ podcast listeners with the promo code of GQPOD10. Once again, it is GQPOD10. Do better with W. I am a fan of my team, but I don't know how far Aaron Judge's first home run of the season went. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of GQ, a wrestling podcast, where we're about to watch Will oh, Ospreay slightly die. Oh, the stairs! Oh, God! Okay, that was not as bad as it could have been. Um, okay. I'm Justin. That's Garrett. Hello. Welcome back. Episode 42, the week of WrestleMania, with the week of Bray Wyatt's documentary, with just a lot of wrestling, a lot of things that has happened... <clears throat> And then the love letter of of Vince McMahon came out today or yesterday, and just so many fun things that has happened this week. It's just, it's great. It's great to be a wrestling fan right now. Yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. It's great. I almost switched the title belts on purpose, but I would have probably been hit by you with the title belt. With the title belt. Um. So let's just we have a lot, obviously, a lot to cover, but right now. Bleach Report's really killing me because it's just, it's taking a year and a half to load. Yeah. Well, I, let me get off of the Wi-Fi. Maybe that's an issue. Anyways, um, the last couple of weeks we've been talking uh, through Bleach Report's uh, top 50 wrestlers, both male and female on the WWE side of all time. Um, while this is loading... Uh, if you want to give the people a, uh, a a review of what has uh, happened since then from 50 down while I try to get this thing to load. So we're going to go from 50 to 21. 50. At 50, we have Paul White. Is he the big show? No, he is Paul White. Oh, okay. Uh, 49 is Lita. Number 48 is Big Van Vader. 47, we have Paper Skin Man. 
46, we have the Phenomenal One, AJ Styles. 45 is the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. 44 is Kofi Kingston. He doesn't have a fancy nickname. I don't understand why. The Jamaican uh, Sensation. 43, we have the Charismatic Enigma, Jeff Jeffrey Nero Hardy. Mm -hmm. 42, we have the Ravishing One, Rick Rude. 41 doesn't count because she sucks. 41 is uh, <clears throat> Sasha Banks. Thank you. Number 40 is Superstar Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 39 is Mr. Monday Night Rob Van Dam. Mm -hmm. 38 is the Black Heart Owen Hart. <clears throat> 37 is Mr. Perfect King Kurt. Good God. Worst. Mr. Perfect Kurt, Kurt Hennig. Hennig. I was going to say, who? King Kurt. Never heard uh, of that guy. 36 is the Animal Batista. 35 is the Ultimate Warrior. 34 is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. 33, Booker T. 32, Jake the Snake Roberts. That pen belongs on the floor now. 31 is the Big Red Monster Kane. Number 30 is the bad guy, Razor Ramon slash Scott Hall. 29 is Trish. 28 is the ninth wonder of the world, China. 27, we have the Queen Charlotte Flair. 26, we have Seth freaking Rollins. 25 is the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 20, that, was good. that was good. 24 is the nature boy, Ric Flair. I don't get that still. I don't either. 23 is the man, Becky Lynch. That's still crazy that she's above him. 22, vegan Superman. Still don't get that. 21, the cerebral assassin, the game, <clears throat> Triple H. So I still don't understand. Like, <clears throat> that last week, we were really confused. How with... you ha how you going to have... Well, I guess she does technically have more accomplishments than Seth. Who? Becky? Becky. Yes, Becky does. But know. okay, so this is usually we do this at the second half, but uh usually we've we've, we've got a pod with this. But we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna start. We're gonna start this this way because we've got a lot to talk about with WrestleMania coming up. <clears throat> so, uh accolades of this person. Yes. Uh this person is a two time WWE champion. A three-time world heavyweight champion, an ECW champion, an intercontinental champion, a tag team champion, and a two-time Money in the Bank winner. This is punk. This is punk. At number 20, CM Punk is over Ric Flair and Triple H. Yeah, over Billy Graham, RVD. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Phyllis Brooks. Did you put Phyllis on there? You're damn right. I did. You put Phyllis on. <laughs> okay, at number. He just made the list. At uh, at 19. number nineteen, he is a ten-time WWE champion, a four-time World Heavyweight Champion, a one-time Intercontinental, one-time United States. Four-time tag team, one-time Money in the Bank, and two-time Royal Rumble winner. Two-time. Two-time Royal Rumble winner. And a Money in the Bank winner. Single Money in the Bank. His cash-in was pretty infamous when he cashed in. And controversial, too. And it's just a he's just a one time intercontinental, one time intercontinental, one time U.S., four time tag team. Yeah. What gives it away really is a ten time WWE champion, because there's not a lot of people currently that are WWE champions still. So. <clears throat> if you would like a hint, I could give you one. I, yeah. Okay. 
you know him very well. Is this Randy? This is Randall. Randall at number 19. Randall Keith Orton. Yeah. When the fuck did he win Money in the Bank? That was during the uh, time of... That was when it was still World Heavyweight and this title together. Hunter. Oh, screwed, yeah, yep. yep Hunter. Nope, sc- Hunter yep, sc- yep. Yep. I got gotcha. you. Hunter screwed. Uh, 18. Yes. Uh, okay. At number 18, he is a one-time WWE champion. A two-time European champion. One-time U.S., one-time Intercontinental, four-time Tag Team Champion, and a Hall of Famer. Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero it is. Do you feel like that's appropriate? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's a good spot for him. At number 17 on this list, he is a seven-time WWE Champion. He is a three-time Universal Champion. He is a King of the Ring winner, a one-time Money in the Bank winner, and a two-time Royal Rumble winner. Is this Lesnar? This is Bork Lesnar. Good old Bork. So you're getting these down. You're getting them. You're picking up on some speed here. But see, I also have the whole list in front of me. It does help. It does help. At 16, number 16 on the list, he is an undisputed WWE Champion. He is a three-time World Heavyweight Champion. He is a two-time WCW Champion. He is a nine-time Intercontinental Champion. He's a two-time United States Champion, a European Champion, a Hardcore Champion, and a seven-time Tag Team Champion. And drumroll, please, because everybody already knows who it is. Chris Jericho. That's Chris Jericho. You knew just because of the undisputed WWE Championship. Dude, he beat Rock and Austin the same night. At he no- earned that shit. And he did. And he was the first ever undisputed, undisputed champion. champion. You are uh, number 15 on the list. He's a three-time WWE champion. He is a hardcore champion. An eight-time tag team champion. And a Hall of Famer. Is this Mick Foley? This is Mick Foley. This is Mick Foley. <clears throat> At number 14 on the list, he is a one-time WWF champion. He is a one-time tag team champion and is a Hall of Famer. Heavyweight tag team Hall of Famer. Yes. I would say there's another thing attached to the Hall of Famer that I have not said because it will give it away. <clears throat> it will give it away if I say the other things attached to it. Give me a hint. <clears throat> this man also has an acting accolade. Terry Funk. No. Keep going farther in the books. Farther back? Farther back than Jesus. Terry Funk. I will say uh, they also named this person the eighth wonder of the world. Is it Andre? It is Andre the Giant. He is the inaugural inductee into the Hall of Fame. I can't add that because that would have given it away. I think uh, he's too high. I agree. Like, way, way too, high. too high. Yeah, people hold Andre up there really high. Now, don't get me wrong, that's Andre. But they hold him to a really high standard. So, uh, At number 13 on the list. Ooh, say angry Hobbs. Um, he is a four-time WWE champion. A two-time Universal champion. He's the Intercontinental Champion, United States Champion, Tag Team Champion, and a one-time Royal Rumble winner. You say WWE and Universal? WWE and also Universal. Universal. 
And there's only one thing I can do that will give it all away. <coughs> oh, look, it's it's a man that needs some milk. Vegan Superman himself. I don't think Osprey stays in the Don Callis family for very long. No. He's going to branch off and it'll be the United Empire. I think so, too. When, when, when <clears throat> uh, Old Bloke gets better. If you like a hint, I'll give it away. I, yeah, I mean... Is this Roman? It's our tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Okay, you know what? I think it's an appropriate level for him. Yeah, I think he's... I think that's per, at number 13. At number 12, this person is way too high on the list. Uh, he is a WWE champion, a two-time world champion, a two-time intercontinental champion, three-time United States champion, three-time cruiserweight champion, five-time tag team champion, a Royal Rumble winner, and a Hall of Famer. Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. He's too high on the list. And just my opinion. Ray should definitely be lower on this list. I mean, he should definitely be on the list, but not that high. <clears throat> Agreed. Uh, at number 11. Chris Benoit. Wow. No. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. Wow. That would have been amazing. <clears throat> at number 11. He is a four-time WWE champion, a WCW champion, a world heavyweight champion, intercontinental champion, European champion, hardcore champion, United States champion, tag team champion, and King of the Ring winner. This is Steve Austin. It is not Steve Austin. Seamus. You were closer with the bald guy. It's closer with the bald guy. <clears throat> But he's, it's all singles. Like, he only won it one time with all those titles. Only WWE Champion is the thing that he won more than these other ones. So, technically, he's a Grand Slam winner. Same era as Austin? Same. Uh, <clears throat> he clashes with Austin. Uh, I think he's more of a generation behind Austin, but they still wrestled at the same time. Just had a different appearance when Austin was around. <clears throat> Just when Austin still had hair, uh, the other guy still had hair. <clears throat> Austin was bald; the other guy still had hair. But is bald now? Yes, currently bald. Yes, still wrestling. Uh, no, not anymore. He uh, he's he was bald when he wrestled. You'll hurt yourself if you don't get this right. <clears throat> Excuse me, everybody. I'm sorry. Same era as Austin. Uh, like I said, so, he's about a generation back of Austin, but Austin and him wrestled at the same time, more on the Austin's later end. And this guy's not beginning, but still wrestled at the same time. A lot of vignettes together in the backstage. Those two, these two guys. So Austin and this other guy, vignetted a ton. In the back, in the 90s and 2000s. And this guy is, was bald. Oh, Goldberg. No, a good, another good bald, <laughs> another good bald guy. Good, no, not, not Goldberg. No. White guy. White guy, yes. I actually talked about him. Last week, if he, if you could make a tag team, um, you could put these two people together, and they would equivalent to the team that I chose, the Creed Brothers. Oh, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. <clears throat> Kurt Angle. So now, top ten. We're in the top ten. Top ten. Are you ready? This is a six-time. WWF champion. One time tag team champion. Two time Royal Rumble winner. Two time Hall of Famer. Shawn Michaels. Not Shawn Michaels. I don't even think Shawn won six titles. Six heavyweight titles? Six WWF championships. Attitude Era. Earlier. 
he did wrestle in the Attitude Era, but he's more infamous for his title reigns earlier than that. How many times did he win the tag titles? One whole time. <clears throat> Is this Randy Savage? S the other guy's tag team partner. Hogan. Hogan at 10. You know what? I'm not mad about that. I, I, I Honestly, I feel like you couldn't be mad at t Hogan being 10. He's not in top five, but he's still, you know, there. I'm not mad about that. Either. At number nine <laughs> on the list, he is... Really? Okay. Again, I haven't seen this, so really? Okay. He is a one-time Intercontinental Champion, one-time Tag Team Champion, and a Hall of Famer. That's it. Really? Attitude Era? Earlier. So, like, the Golden At Era. The H Hogan's Hogan Era. And he... I will. I, I'll give you credit. Uh, give it credit. He he has some one-time Intercontinental, a one-time tag, one-time tag team Hall of Famer. Uh, did I say Hall? Of Famer? Yes, Hall of Famer. Uh, he for the newer generation, he's more infamous for some hall, some Royal Rumble entrances, some stuff on the network when it first came out. Um. And I, honestly, it's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I have a shirt in my, my closet, actually. It's, it's not Randy Savage. It's not Randy. But Randy's still not on the list, so we got to think Randy's coming. He's got to be probably coming quick. Uh, he does have one of the most famous... Uh, he, I would say he put... Um, Wrestling talk shows on the map. This is Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rowdy Roddy Piper at number nine. I think he's too high. I think it's way too high. I think he should be in the 20s. In my opinion. I like Rowdy Roddy, but I think he should be in the 20s. Uh, honestly, I think uh, him and probably Ricky Steamboat need to switch spots. Fair. 34 and <clears throat> 9. At number eight on the list, <clears throat> we have a three-time WWF champion. World Heavyweight Champion, three-time Intercontinental Champion, a European Champion, six-time Tag Team Champion, two-time Royal Rumble winner, and two-time Hall of Famer. This is Shawn Michaels. This is Shawn Michaels. That European one throws me for a loop. When did they retire European? Uh, was it like during the invasion? I feel like it was around in the, the mid-2000s still. Like, I remember, I, I vaguely remember seeing, like, William Regal having it in the mid-2000s. Like, 06. It was before that. At number seven, <clears throat> he is an eight-time both WWF and WWE champion. He is a two-time WCW champion. He is a two-time Intercontinental champion. A five-time tag team champion and a one-time Royal Rumble winner. And by WCW, I mean that guy. So this is like early 2000s. Yes. Yes, that's the, probably the, I would say, yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. Give me mid-tier title reigns. Mid tier title reign. So he won IC one time, two times, two times, and five time tag team. His tag team titles were infamous. And I had a really amazing uh, a nickname for uh, the tag team. And they re, uh, redid it, uh, I think it was randomly during some Raw in like the mid 2010s or late 2010s. <laughs> Is this Mark Calloway? It is not Mark Calloway. White guy. Uh, no, not a white guy. Black guy. Not technically a black guy. He has a splash of black in him. Splash of black. 
His dad is black. His mother is not black. This is Dwayne. This is the eyebrow raisin. He's the final motherfucking boss. I love that there's a final boss on AEW and there's a final boss on WWE. Just saying. Number seven. Dwayne at seven. At number six, this is a two-time WWF champion. Three-time tag team champion and a Hall of Famer. That is it. Read me accolades one more time. Two-time WWF. Two-time tag team champion. See, I wouldn't even clarify this WWF. This is the golden era. And I mean golden era. Two-time WWF. <clears throat> How many time tag? Uh, three times. Hall and Famer? a Hall of Famer just one time. And his Hall of Fame was pushed back for many, many years and should have been in the Hall of Fame. But because of a stubborn man that was running the company at the time, didn't put him in because of beef. <clears throat> Literally because of beef. <clears throat> so WWF champion. Yes. Now don't don't read too hard into WWF. Think of just early wrestling. Don't hold the title of, of because of it being the company. Is this Bruno San Martino? Bruno San Martino. Now, I see why he's that high because he's the longest reigning champion of all time. Yeah, he should be. Just saying. At number five. Number five. We've hit the top five, ladies yes. and gentlemen. We've got to hustle through this part. 13-time WWE champion. Three-time WWE. <laughs> Three-time World Heavyweight champion. Five-time US. Four-time tag team. One-time Royal. Uh, One-time Money in the Bank. And two-time Royal Rumble. <laughs> who, could, who could it be? Can we see this guy? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is John Cena. I, I don't know if I yeah. can really see. What's what's his OnlyFans? Ricky Stanicki. Ricky Stanicki. Him and uh and Randall. At number four, this man is a four-time WWF slash E champion. He is a three-time world heavyweight, big gold, one-time hardcore, six-time tag team, one-time WCW tag team. One time Royal Rumble and one time Hall of Famer. This is Mark Calloway. Mark Calloway, The Undertaker. There's still names on this list that I'm still waiting for, just so we're clear. Yeah, there's a couple that I'm waiting for too. I, I have a feeling I'm just going to throw this out there. Number three is Randy Savage. Number three is Randy Savage. <laughs> Look at that. You didn't, I didn't have to say anything. Number three is Randy Savage. Number. Two. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. No. He's not even on this fucking list. He didn't make dude. the list. But we have Vader. Yep. And Sasha Banks. And Kane. I love Kane. But really? I think we also have Ravishing Rick Rude. I'm sorry. But Rick Rude's on there before Dusty. At number two. Number two. WWF slash E. Oh, no, he's just F. WWF. Six-time WWF. Champion. Champion. Two-time IC. Champion. Two-time tag team. Champion. One-time King of the Ring. And one-time Hall of Fame. I am dying to know number one now. Number one has to be The Miz. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It has to be the fucking Miz. He's not even. I, I don't know. I'm stuck on number two. I haven't, I haven't scrolled down yet. Give me accolades again. Sorry. Six time WWF, two time IC, two time tag team, King of the Ring, and Hall of Famer. Is. God damn. Is this JBL? No. He's not on the fucking list either. No. 
What era? Attitude. Still relevant to this day. Sean. We already said Sean. Oh, yeah, Sean's around here. What in the fuck? Uh... <laughs> That's a very big man doing a tightrope walk. No, because he's a two. Uh, is this Kevin Nash? No, Nash didn't make the list either. You got another clue for me? White guy? White guy, bald. We just talked about him a little bit ago. Is it Steve? Steve. Steve at two. And at number... Oh my god. At number one. Is this going to piss me off? Yeah. Five-time WWF champion. Two-time IC. Two-time tag team. King of the ring. Royal Rumble winner. Co-winner. And two-time Hall of Famer. He is a co-winner of the same Royal Rumble with your favorite wrestler from the WCW. At num- I'm going to say it. At number one, it is Brett the Hitman Hart. Auditorial people, you're going to miss a rant. Um, With that being said, we'll be right back. We have made such amazing progress on this podcast journey and are pumped to share our first sponsor with you guys tonight, Dubby Energy. Dubby is on a mission to change the game and create a better future for energy drinks, and we are so excited to partner with them. Dubby is your taste buds favorite energy drink that comes with all the good stuff and none of the crash. Formulated with vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including their patented NeuroFactor. Dubby gives you clean energy and laser focus without any fillers, maltodextrin, or anti official colors. Just mix one scoop with eight ounces of cold water and you're ready to tackle the, whatever the day throws at you. Even better, Dubby ships worldwide. So whatever corner of the world you're listening to us from, you can enjoy it too. With some awesome flavors and growing following, see what all the buzz is about and get on board with the clean energy movement. Try it today with our exclusive promo code available to all GQ podcast listeners with the promo code of GQPOD10. Once again, it is GQPOD10. Do better with Dubby. Welcome back, you auditorial beautiful people. Uh, I'm going to let Garrett have the floor now because he has been stewing on this Bret Hart being number one thing. <clears throat> so, um, Garrett, so... Do you feel okay? There are people... Who's missing? Just two off the top of my head that are missing that belong on this list in the top 20. You're talking about Kevin Nash? JBL? That's, that's, the, yeah, that's two. Kevin, two, two more. John Bradshaw, Layfield. No Nash. No JBL. Miz. So the two that I was talking about are the Miz mm-hmm. and Dusty Rhodes. I just, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The Miz. <clears throat> Belongs in the top ten. The top Miz, 10? the Miz should be number nine. Really, the top ten. Okay, think about the Miz's accolades. Oh, I, yeah, he's he's got he's he's a he's a Grand Slam champion. He's a two time WWE winner, multiple time Grand Slam champion. Yeah, he's a two time. I know he's a two time WWE. He's champion. he's a nine time Intercontinental champion. He's a he put the U.S. title back on the fucking map. Same thing with the IC. He brought that beautiful thing back too. And <clears throat> tag team too. Yeah. You know. Dusty Rhodes not being on this list, it makes me want to vomit. I can understand not having Nash on the list. What about Luger? Didn't have enough accolades in the WWE. 
but uh, not having JBL on this list. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, that's a, um, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. Like of of all the people not on the list, honestly, the one that pisses me off the most is the Miz. Yeah, you're a big Miz uh, Miz guy. And the <coughs> fact that people on people that are on this list, like I said before, like Vader, mm-hmm. didn't win a single fucking title right. when he was in WWE. Right. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. That's it. That's his only accolade. Right. Uh, yeah, just go to the, <clears throat> the 50 guys. The 50 through 35. Uh, like I said, Ravishing Rick Rude, I believe he shouldn't be on there. Well, I mean, I but ravishing Rick Rude. So there's there are some things that fall into like uh, he had a huge storyline with Randy Savage. He had a like, dude, the rivalry between him and Savage was huge. Jake Jake was on there, right? Yes, okay. Jake was thirty two. Okay. I'm just trying to think of but other like, people that there are people. I mean, like I said, Vader. Realistically, <coughs> Vader and uh, bu- 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 uh, I hate to speak ill of the dead, but Owen Hart. Yeah, yeah. Kurt Hennig. Like I said, there was not a whole lot of accolades that I thought for Henning to even be on there. I mean, you take <clears throat> you take Piper. The match orders. For- Right, you take Piper, and you put him at, just say, 35. Right. Take the Warrior off the list. Yeah. You put Miz at 9. And I hate to put him this low, but he didn't really have a lot of title reigns. He just contributed a lot to the business. You take Vader off at 48, and you put Dusty Rhodes there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you take, <clears throat> uh, realistically, you take AJ Styles off this list. Yeah, most of his accolades are outside. You put, you put Kevin Nash there. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but you take Andre the Giant mm-hmm. off this list at 14, and you put John Bradshaw Layfield there. Well, even taking Bruno San Martino a little bit farther down, too. Uh, there's some other Well, names. yeah, I mean, you take Bruno. I mean, so you swap... Piper over to 35 with the Warrior. You put Miz at 9. Mm-hmm. And then you take and you put Bruno at... Just say you put Bruno at 14. Yeah. Take Andre off the list and you put JBL at 6. Right. Well, people, humanoids, um, My let, let us let us know. <laughs> Please, give us your opinions. We, we had a viral YouTube clip that went crazy now was it because st- i got fucking heated and it's true so i got heated and people and it was like had a lot of fun people had a lot of fun people watch. talking back and forth in there too so you know it is you know it is what it is i, I, I like hearing other people's opinions there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of opinions out there I, I like hearing other people's opinions about why my opinion doesn't Mesh with theirs. I'm not saying that it's right and or wrong, but guess what? You don't care. It's my opinion. It's your opinion. So, in my opinion, um, we're gonna go really into WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania week. Gonna hop into night one. It's it's the best week of the year. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I have the kids this weekend too, so we're watching every bit of it. Did uh. Did you see the pizza making contest between against Otis, Otis and, Otis and Omos? Yeah, and Biggie was the referee. And did you see the slap at the end? Yep. Ow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just just shows you right now they're having fun. Yeah, they're having fun. They have to. They, so these guys have to be having so much fun. Anyways. So it has been rumored. It has not been confirmed yet, but it has been rumored that night one lead. They're leading it off. It's Rhea, Becky Lynch. Leading off WrestleMania night one. I think that's a poor decision. Why do you say that's a poor decision? Why are you gonna why are you gonna start well no? You gotta start off with a bang. It's like the Chris Jericho Eric, method. Eric Bischoff. Start hot. Yeah, I gotta start hot. I gotta start with a big one. And Jericho got that from Eric. Yeah. So Rhea 
Becky, night one, they kick it off. Now, we both agree. We've been saying for We've been saying it for a weeks. long time. Uh, Rhea's not losing this title. Nope. Um, Becky's going to go home. Becky's going to go home and take a nap. And her book just came out. Well, she's on a book tour right now. Uh, she's a, doing a really good book tour, actually. Uh, and then this past week, they were interviewing Rhea on Ariel Elwani's uh, podcast. And Becky showed up and had a little bit of a brawl at uh, on the podcast as well. Is that De Niro? No, it's a guy that can't wrestle. Um, Talk about Renee Paquette like that. I love Renee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, but yeah, yeah Rio, Rio, Rio over Becky. It's it's it goes without saying. And they even have said that there will not be any Dirty Dom on the side. Nope. It's just going to be Rhea going out. Mommy versus the man. I, hopefully they let it go for a while. I think they can. Go. I think I think they'll probably give them twenty minutes. You think so? only twenty? I think they might give them 35, 40. I think, think they will. about the main event. Well, so the main event, but then this is what they're saying how it's going to go. So then the next match is the tag team ladder match. Did you hear the rumor about this potential match today? What rumor per se? I've heard a lot of rumors with this match. Both sets of titles will be on the line so it's weird so didn't what, we did, what yeah did we yeah if you go yeah check receipts yep yep uh-huh yeah it's, it's right there it's, it's there. all it's right yep right there. right there right there because you if you pull one set down so <clears throat> what they're saying <clears throat> is is <clears throat> if a team pulls one set down mm-hmm. so land of hypotheticals i love Tommaso hypotheticals. champa goes up that ladder yeah. grabs Grabs the red. Red belt. Yeah. Him and Johnny Gargano are now the raw tag team champions. But the blue's still up there. And they they could still grab the blue ones. But they could just leave with red and go. But they could be like, hey, we got these belts. We're running. Bye. See ya. Now, do I think... I Honestly, I think the SmackDown titles, the blue ones, I think those will come down first. So who will get blue? Who's on blue right now that could win it? So let's just go through it. So you have the awesome, just... you have the awesome truth. Yep. Priest and Finn. Judgment Day. Yep. DIY. Uh, DIY. Then you have <clears throat> was it Creed? Theory no. and Waller. Theory, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Theory and Waller. Prophets. Mm, or no, no, they beat the prophets. They beat the prophets. Uh, New Catch Republic. Yes, New Catch Republic. There's one more. Hold on. Hold on. I get it. I get it. It's It's got to be a team from Raw. Hold on. I got it. Just got to pull it up. Scooty me. Well, I thought I had it. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. There it is. Oh, New Day. How did we forget them? New Day. So I also... <clears throat> heard a theory uh, potentially uh, that theory mm-hmm. and Waller have been actually taken out of this match. You know who they're gonna put in? The Hardys. Yes, boy! Pretty deadly. The, the Hardys. No. The Hardy boys. Matt and Jeff. Jay White? No, no, Matt Matt and Jeff. <clears throat> oh, Devon and Bully. Got it. No, 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 no. Jeffrey Nero and, and Matt. Gangrel and Christian? <laughs> no, 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 no. Jeff and Matt Hardy. Dito Brown and Mark Henry. D Generation X. Skull and Eight Ball. <laughs> <laughs> so. Los Bariquas! Now. <laughs> So in reality, the Rockers, <laughs> the, the Rock and Roll Express. Why not? They're Mar- still doing it. Mar- <laughs> so bring in Marty Jannetty. Yeah, him and Sean. Maybe Sean will get hard enough and his eye will be fine. <laughs> it just goes back to center. Like he goes, Hi. no, he goes into the. He the ah! oh! I can see it's a miracle. <laughs> and then all of a sudden. Like, ah, oh, not again. No. 
So I'm gonna say that. Do you, I don't think Finn and Damien retain. Hot take here. It's a hot take. New Catch Republic wins the SmackDown titles. Okay, and DIY wins red because Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate are on fire. <laughs> They're doing good on SmackDown. They're doing good, and no. I think the awesome, the truth. awesome truth. They're they're hot right now because I think we're gonna see a cash in on Monday night. But anyway, so we well we talked. Yeah, we that's, we chatted about that's, that's later down. Well, that's that's night two stuff. That's cute. <laughs> it's as big as the other thing. It's huge, huge, huge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> I'm dying again. <laughs> so then we have. Uh, the, the latest um, match that got implemented this past week, Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Dirty Dom. It, what is this? Do, Dominic Mysterio. Dirty Dom. Uh, I think and Santos Sant- and Dominic should win, but I they're going to give it to Rey and Dragon. I think they'll give it to Rey and Dragon. And I think this is Rey's final, final match, final WrestleMania Okay, we're done. Goodbye, Ray. He's been hurt. He's it, maybe this is his curtain call. He beats his son. The story's over again. Again, it, it's, it's oh, daddy ass. Yes, you can't. You can't do that. He's old. And look at the wrinkles on his back. Gross. Uh, then we have is that a land manatee there in the green here? Never mind. Yes. <clears throat> uh, then we have brother versus brother. We have main event J versus No Ye. Ye. No Ye. Ye. Dude, can you imagine the Philly crowd? Oh, dude. With Lil Wayne coming out with him? That. Wheezy's coming out with him? It, that place is going to be bouncing. I wonder who Meek Mill's going to be coming out with. Is Meek Mill's coming out? Probably Jimmy. Meek Mill versus Lil. I'm going with Lil Wayne. Boy, yeah. But Wheezy coming out with. Uh, it, Jace, there's no chance. Yeah. There's no shot Jimmy wins, right? You wouldn't think so. Jay's Jay's so on a dude. He is so hot right now. He is. He is. As our good friend Adam Bellitz likes to say, he in is en fuego. That's a shirt right there. En fuego. There is n- no shot that Jay Uso loses this match. I do like that. In the last several decades, we've had brother versus brother. It's been every fifteen years. Uh, they finally laid that out. So and yeah. So first one, one was was Owen and Brett. Yep. The 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 last one fifteen years ago. What was that one? I know I saw the names and it's gonna bother me now. <clears throat> brother versus brother. It's only happened three times ever. Matt was Matt and Jeff. Matt and Jeff. Yeah. Matt and Jeff. So yeah, Owen and Brett. Matt and Jeff. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and then now Jimmy and Jay. Yeet. All right, yeah, Jay, Yeet. Jay should win this. And then the this last week on SmackDown, they just announced this one as well. This is a Philadelphia street fight, correct? Night or the not, three or... women versus? Oh no, that's on. I guess that'll be night two. <clears throat> so they have Bianca, Jade, and Naomi versus Damage Control. Damage Control. Which um, really sucks that. The women's tag titles aren't getting showcased on the showcase of Immortals. Now, to be fair, they may add a <clears throat> a pre-show match for the women's. Who knows? I just to be or fair, night two. yeah, maybe. But the thing here's my thing: how relevant has been the women's tag team division? I just tell me. Besides, besides damage <clears throat> control, damage control. Well, they broke the curse of getting hurt. They did. They finally did. But again, <laughs> speaking of women's tag team titles, uh, did you see that uh, Monday night after Raw, Chelsea Green got kicked out of their hotel? No. Yeah. What? Because. The, Not a storyline real? No, like legit. She got kicked out of her hotel room. Because hotel management thought she was an escort because of how she was dressed. <sighs> Yeah. Was Matt with her? No. That's even better. <laughs> Just her. She was furious. Wow. Yeah. 
Now, she does dress the way she dresses, but again, though, crazy to think that you're going to get kicked out of a hotel for that. I've seen women in wrestling wear way Less. worse stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. So then we have crazy the co-main event. Uh, they've, they have said that this will be the match before the main event. It's going to be Sammy versus Gunter night one, uh, where I don't know. They have said possibly that it's going to be Sammy will have, um, Gable and Otis on his side, and then you'll have Imperium on Gunter's side. So it will be a fair fight on the outsides. I think Sammy wins. I think with I, with this new with the build up over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I also think that I like that they're doing a uh, an homage to Rocky. Yeah, that's what they're doing right now. Yeah, that Chad is literally training Sammy to be the new Rocky. So I can I can see this. We don't. I don't think it's happened or said. I can see them doing a vignette. Before the match, he's gonna go stand up next to the Rocky sign and do it. But then you'll have, oh, it's Rocky Four. It's literally Rocky Four. <laughs> I didn't realize that until right now. We're literally getting Rocky Four, but it's a Canadian instead of a guy from Philadelphia. But it's it's fine. We're getting Rocky Four <laughs> for the IC title. You know what would be kind of cool. What is if he came out as Generico? I saw that came up on my feed the other day. El Generico has been officially dead for 11 years. Uh-huh. 11 years. Uh-huh. Fine. I, if you want El Generico, I want Walter. Give me Walter back. I want Walter. It's literally the same guy. No. It, it, okay. It's the same guy with, like, Czech Republic. Completely different moveset. I don't care. Give me, give me Walter. It's like saying the same thing with you with Big Bronson Reed. His name is Bronson Reed. Stop adding the big. Yeah. And let me have Walter back. Okay. Deal. With Bronson that. Reed, Walter. Done. And we get with Blood Oath? Yes. Okay. Done. Get the knife. Here we go. <laughs> no, we'll get banned for that. Right. <laughs> I'm not. So in our main event, this is the tribal combat. This is Roman <clears throat> and Rock. Versus Seth and Cody. To set the stipulation for night two. To set two. the stipulation for night two. If you win... if Sorry, if if Cody and Seth win, no tribal combat, no no, no interference. It's it one is one-on-one. On one. On one. And then if Roman and Rock win, Bloodline will be there. There will be a... It's Bloodline rules. It's bl Bloodline everything. So that leads you up into it. We do we get massive heel Rocky? What intro do we get of Rocky coming in? What version of Roman do we get? What kind of entrance do we get? And then I hope to God, maybe WWE is not smart. Maybe they're not. This is the time where you do that in that mashup intro. America burn it down. And then, yeah, with the burn it down with it. I think that's the perfect time to do it. But, my opinion. I honestly, though, I think that he only I think he only came out to that one time. It wasn't in WWE. It was in the Indies. He came out. He. I don't think he's ever come out to He came out to the American Dream one time. Not in his recent stint. Yes. In his recent stint? Yes. I don't recall ever seeing. And honestly, I think it was against Seth. I am almost positive. <sighs> For some reason, I because I remember him always saying, yes, I want to honor my dad, but I never want to take away the lineage of his, of his thing. But I feel like he's never done the American Dream thing. I know he's done it in the indies. Like I know he did it like one time in the indies, right before he got his neck tattoo. Um, he never did an AEW. I know that he always did the whoa. No, I'm I'm pretty sure that he he's done it in WWE. But anyway, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there's two there's two ways of this match going. Obviously, like, I, 
do you believe that Solo will get involved? Or will he stay out of it? I honestly, I think that uh, pursuant to orders from the final boss, no one else gets involved in this match. You think so? I think so. Hmm. Yeah. And, I, then, hmm. and then we get Cody and Roman, night two, with the wise man at ringside. Speaking of, we'll pause that there. It's Hall of Fame, obviously. <clears throat> How do you feel about Roman being the one that introduces Paul? Because they just they announced it on Friday, on Monday. That he that Roman's inducting Paul Heyman. Roman is officially inducting Paul Heyman. That got announced on Monday Night Raw. Ugh. Just threw up my mouth a little. Um. I it's it was honestly I was a little um I don't like it. I was a little sh I wasn't okay, shock's not the word. Um it's predictable. Obviously it's disappointing. I think they could have had obviously we we said that it should have been, you know, Steve. Yeah. Uh Mar it could have been Mark. Um it could have been Bully. It could have been Devon. <clears throat> um Shoot, I'm trying to think any of the other ECW guys that are available that could have done it, that could speak coherently. Tommy would have been the best one, but Tommy's doing stuff with TNA, so he can't do it. Can't be Taz. Nope. Steve, Stevie Richards? Yeah. Would have been a good one. But they officially uh, said Roman will be the one inducting Paul uh, on Monday Night Raw. I mean, <clears throat> there is there's a lot of history with Heyman and... The family, the Anawaii family, uh, but I just, I don't, I don't like that. I don't I, either. It, just, it doesn't sit right. But like I said, Friday, Friday, it's gonna be a long night. Uh, obviously, SmackDown, but for Hall of Fame is directly after SmackDown. They're in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal on SmackDown. They are. They, they. I've noticed that they haven't really made a lot of announcements for pre matches. For WrestleMania, either, I don't, I don't <clears throat> which I don't think there's going to be a ton. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah. So also, uh, Speed premiered today. Yes, it did. I did not see. I did not watch it. I was busy at work, uh, so I did not have a chance to watch it. Um, they did. I thought I did read something that they were going to make um, Ricochet the honorary champion, but I don't know if he actually was or not. <clears throat> well, they haven't declared a champion yet, but Ricochet's first match. On WWE Speed was him against Dragon Lee. Really? Now imagine those two uh, in a five-minute all-out match. Yeah, I was gonna say there it is. Yeah, it's Speed, and it's literally a three-minute match. Yeah, and it looks like. Uh, with hold on, I'm looking at the end of this match to see who wins. Right, right, right. Uh, Ricochet wins with three seconds left. Right, right. right. Not nah, that ain't gonna happen. Um, but that's that's <clears throat> night one. We think, in my opinion, I think Rock and Roman win night one. I think we what we talked about last week. You mainly bring it to my attention. I think Seth walks out. And leaves Cody. Someone will walk <clears throat> out. Whether it's <clears throat> Rock Roman, Roman, whether it's Roman walking out on the Rock because the Rock is stealing the spotlight, or it's Seth walking out on Cody because because it's Seth. Whatever reason, Seth Rollins gets in his mind. They just rolled in in a Maserati SUV. Yes, they did. Um, but that's night one. So I think, I think Rock and Roman win, and it's going to be Bloodline rules uh, night two. But uh, humanoids out there, what do you think? Uh, do you believe that's going to be 
Cody and Seth, Rock or Roman, I don't know. But I don't know that they're going to necessarily want it to be bloodline rules, though. Because that means that vicious. not only uh, are Jimmy and Solo able to uh, be, involved. be involved, but that also means that Jay, Seth, and a player to be named later, Randy, anybody, KO, uh, yeah. anybody that right. the blood, bloodline has fucked over in the last five years sammy literally anybody that has broken them yeah so uh with that being said humanoids on the auditorium we'll be right back we have made such amazing progress on this podcast journey and are pumped to share our first sponsor with you guys tonight dubby energy Dubby is on a mission to change the game and create a better future for energy drinks, and we are so excited to partner with them. Dubby is your taste buds' favorite energy drink that comes with all the good stuff and none of the crash. Formulated with vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including their patented NeuroFactor, Dubby gives you clean energy and laser focus without any fillers, maltodextrin, or anti official colors. Just mix one scoop with eight ounces of cold water and you're ready to tackle the whatever the day throws at you. Even better, Dubby ships worldwide. So whatever corner of the world you're listening to us from, you can enjoy it too. With some awesome flavors and growing flip following, see what all the buzz is about and get on board with the clean energy movement. Try it today with our exclusive promo code available to all GQ podcast listeners. With the promo code of GQPOD10. Once again, it is GQPOD10. Do better with W. Welcome See? back, you beautiful auditorial people. I sent you our milestone this past week on YouTube. Uh, we hit 100 subscribers. 100 plus people subscribed to us to listen to us or watch us. Yeah weird thanks thanks peeps that's crazy right yeah just saying i mean and we've only <clears throat> i mean realistically we've only been doing this for like six weeks yeah seven weeks on youtube we're at 109 as of tonight 109 subscribers on our on our youtube video now it says there are 62 videos but because of our shorts you know it makes a whole lot of sense we do yeah. i put the shorts out there on a daily basis so people can see our bright and shining happiness yeah there we are. Um, <clears throat> before we dive into um, night two, uh, we'll d bring it down a little bit just to talk about it because we need to. Um, <clears throat> on Monday, the wrestle doc that was the life of Bray Wyatt um, premiered on Peacock. Uh, the world was very excited for it to happen. I was just elated yeah uh, i also said i wasn't ready i just i don't think anybody don't could think be ready anybody was ready <clears throat> um the matter of depth that they put into it the matter of <clears throat> people who interviewed and willingly gave up time to talk and you could tell who his true friends were yeah. um in the documentary uh i did appreciate having his audio clips <clears throat> not video just audio talking about yeah. his ideas i thought that was an amazing hearing, touch hearing his voice um i liked that <clears throat> they brought in his literally his friend his personal his personal guy who made everything for him it was it's like his one of his longest best, friends best friends that he literally the dude that played the fiend character when he came back that one killed me because i like what so bray he goes we could get any no his friend we can get anybody to be the stump double he goes i need somebody i can trust and you're the only one that i trust to do it and it, it killed me um bray's story um bray's story hits home harder than any other story for me personally 
Um, yeah. it, it, I won't lie. I cried like a baby. I bawled. I bawled so hard, and I waited till the kids went to bed. Um, I was watching it out here, so they were watching it too, and Hazel was asking questions, Austin was asking questions. And then I paused it before I knew what was going to happen. Obviously, we know. Like, it's like it's like reading a book. Like You know the, the main character is going to die at the end, but you just, you just don't know how it's going to make you feel kind right. of a thing. Yep. And I sat here on this couch, <clears throat> and I... Uh, completely lost it um multiple times actually when john huber came on the screen yeah um that one killed me and if you don't know who john huber is that's um brody lee oh God, brody, brody lee. lee um luke harper luke harper he <clears throat> obviously one of his biggest friends fans just life um and we lost him early in his life too Two years before Bray. <clears throat> and then we got to see Braun Strowman for the first time in forever because he got to do this doc and he got me crying. Alexa Bliss was on and we haven't seen her since the baby, since before she was pregnant. And she got me crying. Um, what killed me the most was how happy he was uh, to go get his kids from school. Yeah, that that day, mm, that that one hurt a lot because all he said was, "I'm gonna go take a nap, and I'm gonna wake up and go get the kids." And his ex wife was very excited about it. And JoJo, I thought it was very brave of her to do this doc. Yeah, um, because that raw moment where she said. I went into the room to wake him up, and I, as soon as I touched him, I knew something was wrong. And, yeah, I, I'm i holding it together <clears throat> as best as I can. Um, if you guys have listened to the podcast or watched it for a long time, we took a whole episode um, of us just reminiscing. And the life of Bray was we... Found out that day, literally maybe two hours before the podcast, and we hadn't had a chance to even wrap our heads around it. Uh, we kind of did it raw and just in the moment, and I cried on the podcast. I <clears throat> I lost it. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I was very upset with WWE this year, thinking, why didn't they put Bray in the Hall of Fame? And you know what? They did it better. Yep. They uh, they made a documentary about a man that changed the world. That's better than getting a Hall of Fame. Yep. He'll get in. Like he'll, I, I honestly, I think next year he'll he, like he'll get in. But you, if you get a documentary, that says something about your career. Yeah, about who you were and who you still are, and I guarantee you. Well, not even <clears throat> not just who you still are, but what you mean. Yeah, and what you meant to so many people. Right, and what you still mean to all of these people. Um, I saw <clears throat> on Twitter uh, John Huber's widow mm -hmm. posted. Uh, it was two words, and it was, I'm broken. <sighs> and it was, it was in that moment, like, damn. <clears throat> and then, I think, I think the, the, the biggest thing, I think that, that hit me the hardest was, uh, they were talking to Braun, and he said, Jojo called mm. Mm -mm. and said he's gone. <clears throat> and, you know, seeing seeing your everyday average person mm -hmm. openly weeping is one thing. But when you see this 
monster of a man openly weeping. It just, it hits a little different. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, um, yeah. This, this documentary was done very, very well. Yeah. They did a lot of justice like, to Wyndham <clears throat> Rotunda. Uh, I, I firmly believe that they also took into consideration uh, all of the people that they interviewed, yeah, their personal feelings, <clears throat> yeah, by not pushing too hard. Um, and I think they waited an appropriate amount of time. Oh, I, I, yeah, I definitely think so. I think, I think they wanted to do something, but then went, you know what? Let's wait for the healing process. Let's do what we need to do. And I mean, realistically, JoJo had the final call on that. Yeah. Like, she did. Yeah. So I will say, um, you know, what hits me home for it all, literally, this is my this is my PSA. You know, take it or leave it. Um, go get yourself checked out. Um our buddy Adam Bellets, uh, the next day, I was talking to him that day when he died, and Adam texted me and said, I'm going to go get myself checked out now. <clears throat> I said, what pushed you over it? He goes, don't get me wrong, Bray pushed me over. But it was Kelly that pushed me because she had been asking him for a long time just to go get checked. He goes, no, it's fine. I'll go get, I'll get checked eventually. It's fine. And then you have this. And he, <clears throat> and he went and got checked out. I went and got checked out. You know, I have heart problems. Um, that's a constant fear of mine. Um, literally, that I'm going to take a nap one day and never wake up. And what will happen to my kids? And what will what will people say about me? What will people, what, what is my lineage? Have I made an impact in this world? So just seeing something like that, it really affected me hard made me just a very appreciative of life and uh i miss bray i do even though i never met him i feel like i've just have known him and i feel like i've been a part of it and i just i feel like there was somebody i saw on twitter that said i'm just waiting for the elaborate him coming out and going it was just a part of the whole thing and it's well, never gonna happen uh taylor said that during the documentary yeah He's like, I'm still waiting for a phone call. Hey, I'm right here. Or for <clears throat> him to just come walking through the door. Yeah. And it just Stop. had been or have been a, a, a joke. A swerve. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have made that determination <clears throat> that um, I'm, I am going to get a tattoo of an homage to him actually and i picked the perfect place for it it's not going to be you know can be visible for me and only for me uh but right here on the thigh um get his logo get them off um and get that quote in the sea i was the color red in, in a, a world of black, black and white. white i think that's just and if people know me, I am not a normal person when it comes to, you know, this world. I'm different. I'm eclectic. And I feel myself as something different. But his whole, this thing just changed me like crazy. So um, we wanted to take just a brief moment. I know it would take a lot of time and it'll chop up a little bit of our WrestleMania thing. But it was worth every moment. So <clears throat> please get yourself checked out. It never hurts to go get a checkup. You never know what's happening. His was underlining. No one knew that he had a heart issue. He said he was going to go get checked out, and here we are. Well, it's because he got COVID. Yep. And please, and if you haven't had the chance to look at the watch the documentary, go to Peacock. Hundred percent. It's it's worth a watch. It really is. I would watch it again if I wouldn't cry as hard as I possibly could. Um. So night two, WrestleMania. Let's just shake it off. Night two. They're kicking off with Drew and Seth. That doesn't surprise me. You start off, you got to start off with the bang. You're not going to undershow the, the main event. 
So you might as well put the world heavyweight title at the front. Bookend it. Yep. So uh, Drew versus Seth. We have been saying this for a while. Uh, this is this is Seth's last time. This is McIntyre's big moment. And he will win it. He is just this last week where he cut a promo in front of a coffin and said, he, it's time to bury it. It's time to be done. I will win. This is my time. And Drew is so hot right now. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Uh, then you have the next match, which uh, we what we would call, uh, it's it's a bathroom match. It's a popcorn match? It's a popcorn match. It's the final testament versus the pride. Honestly, I'm kind of pumped about this match. I'm not. I think it's going to be dumb. Unfortunately, street fight. I think it's going to be dumb. Unfortunately. But you don't like the Street Profits. Correct. So you're really... And I don't particularly care for Bobby Lashley. And I fucking love Karrion Cross. And you like AOP too. Right. So you're really heavy saying AOP kicked the shit out of, out of the Street Profits. Yeah. Okay. It, it's honestly... It, I think it's going to be Karrion Cross and crew. I honestly hope so. What if they went the other way? I call it the Hurt Business still, but the pride doesn't seem right. It's the Hurt Business. Yeah. <clears throat> the Nation? Of Domination. Yes. Um, then we have LA Knight versus AJ Styles. So, there's a lot of things that I think about this match. Um, I think uh, it's going to be a great match. I really do. Between these two should be star-studded talents that are treating them as mid card right here. This is a mid card match. They're putting this as a, we're not going to remember this match. No, people are going to remember this match because I feel like this is going to happen. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if it's, I don't care. I think this is what's going to happen. LA Knight will win. I'm just hands down. LA Knight's going to win. The lights are going to go out. You're going to hear Bray Wyatt's music. You're going to see Uncle Howdy pop up on that screen. Fireflies show up all across the arena. Lights kick back on. Uncle Howdy's in the ring. Sister Abigail's L.A. Knight. And now you have another feud where L.A. Knight can continue on his fights against the Wyatt family. With Uncle Howdy. I don't know if it'll happen at Mania, but I feel like it will happen... Night after? Well, it won't be Raw. It'll be SmackDown. It'll be SmackDown. It might be the SmackDown after. I think Uncle Howdy makes his appearance against LA Knight, though. I think that's the appropriate thing, because when watching the documentary, I didn't realize that his last match was at a house show that I was supposed to go to. I had planned on going to the Rockford show because I, I went to Rockford. I, I, that's where I went to school. And I've seen house shows at Rockford, at, uh, at BMO Harris Center. And I wanted to go because Bray White was going to be there. I wanted to see Bray, see Bray wrestle. Right. Um, uh, I think it came down to it was just it just wasn't going to be right. It took it's a six hour drive. It's a lot of you know. But I was supposed to go to that. My sister and I talked about it. She remembers like I had planned on going. So it's only apropos to have AJ versus Uncle Howdy. La Knight. So that's what I meant. La La Knight and Uncle Howdy. I think it's I think it's the best um, situation. Plus, we might <clears throat> finally see the uh, the finalization of the Firefly Funhouse gang finally coming back too. Yeah, the, the actual the stable. actual stable that was supposed to happen. The Wyndham Six. <sighs> there was so much. What did you think of the animatronic mask? The the, the new, new one, the new lantern. The ma- yeah, the it was a nice nice little touch. Did you like the back of the head one? Yeah. Of jo- JoJo's 3D yeah. scanned face. Yeah. So, um, what do you, do you think LA Knight wins against AJ? I think he does. Okay. Uh, then we have the uh, triple threat for the United States Championship of Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. I honestly, going into this, I don't know who wins. I really don't. 
and I'm okay with any either one of them winning. I would I either person winning, I'm okay with. I don't know who wins this match. But I did see something today where how Logan Paul will enter the ring. Did you see this? No. Sit on a giant dick. No. Damn it. Okay. He's not right on KSI. It's weird. <laughs> um <laughs> I so there was a picture. Uh, yep. There's a picture of somebody they're they're driving towards Philadelphia for for WrestleMania weekend. And on a flatbed truck is a prime Jeep. It's literally prime everything. And he's gonna go down the ramp in a prime Jeep. <laughs> and remember, Prime's going to be in the center of the ring the whole entire night, a uh, whole entire two nights of WrestleMania. Every PLE here on out. For the rest of the year. It's a one year deal. It's gross. So we're going to have Prime smack dab in the center of the ring. It's weird. Very. Uh, so, in, in my opinion, I think Logan retains. I think Logan retains. Um, what do you say? I realistically, I think it'll probably be Randy. Really? I just don't like seeing US on him. I don't know why. I just. KO said he's never going to take an IC match ever again, though. I don't think he'll. I don't think he's ever won it. Randy? Yeah. He's never won one. So that so would, it be... would solidify his Grand Slam. Yeah. Um, did you see the recent news that why. Uh, uh, Kevin Owens will never uh, challenge for the IC ever again. No. He <clears throat> is tied the same amount of days as Owen Hart, and he wants to hold that. He doesn't want to do Owen Hart in any injustice. He loved Owen Hart, obviously being a Canadian himself, uh, but he said he will never challenge anybody for the IC because he is tied with Owen Hart as the amount of days, and he was okay with being tied with Owen Hart. Do you think Kevin Owens not win U.S.? You think it's going to be Randy or Bust? I, it won't be Logan. Hmm. I don't think Logan retains. I don't think he does. Now, Logan just did re-sign his deal. He's, he's done with boxing. He's focusing hard on WWE, so he's going to be around for a while. Uh, he's so just, does that mean he's not going to be there for, for Jake? Well, he said he's not taking any more singles matches. He's not doing any more boxing. He is focusing his whole entire rest of his uh, mindset to WWE and his business ventures. So he is a WWE guy, 100%. No more boxing. Did he almost kick Trent Breda's mother? Almost. He, well, hold on. Where's, he said, I would never. Where's the brother? Where's... Where's Nicholas? Well, there's Orange Cassidy. Okay. Oh, she slapped Matthew. Oh, Orange Punch. Okay, that's done. So in the co-main event... Oh, sorry, in the main event... Are they serious? What? Are they seriously going to have best friends win? They might. That would be literally the worst thing. Well, who would, close. who would they face? I think they're leading up to the Young Bucks versus FTR at Dynasty. So then FTR wins the titles again? You think the EVPs will end up getting the titles? Yep. I think Best Friends needs another push. <clears throat> I think Best Friends needs to not be... Aw. He just got rejuvenated by a kiss from his mom. Gross. You don't want your mother to give you a spooch? No. No? No. Is she a listener? Maybe. Oh, turnbuckle. And one, two, three. Ah! So uh, the co-main, Bailey EO Sky. Bailey wins. Bailey wins. That's just honestly, it's just, there might be some tomfoolery. There might be some. I don't know. Damage control faces the night before, so there might be. But. 
why would there be tomfoolery foolery in Bailey's favor, though? No, what I'm saying is that there might be some stuff against you know against Bailey with the with damage control. They may I don't know. I don't think they'd do anything. I think that it would be uh, the Black Trio coming out to save Bailey if that was the case. But you know, is what it is. You know what I'm talking about. And then in the main event, uh, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. We've talked about this. We said it last couple weeks. I have this feeling. This one, I don't know. <clears throat> There's two ways. Because he just did a... So Roman just did an interview this past weekend saying if he ever loses the title, he's hanging up the boots and he's done. Yeah. So then in our wrestling brains... We've seen this before. You you show your cards. He's not losing. But then we've seen this before. The guy that lost the last main event at WrestleMania comes back and normally... Oh! Did just Trent just turn? Trent just hit Orange Cassidy with the psycho knee. Chuck Taylor's about to cry. We're getting a Trent Beretta heel turn? Best friends is over. Best friends is over. And he walked out on his mom. That's awesome. I'm here for it. I'm in for it. Um, the, yeah, there's multiple things. You could have Cody win. Finish the story. Finish the story. Or you can have Roman win, continue the streak, and go Don't for the back and go for Backlund. Yeah, that's the next one is Backlund. Don't call it no. a streak. Is it Backlund? Or is it or is it Hulk? A Hulk. So he's going after Hulk and then next would be Backlund. I don't know. It, it, there's so many things that are involved. If it's bloodline rules, then there's a lot more things that can happen. Well, and if it's bloodline rules, though, <clears throat> that means everybody can interfere. Everybody. That might mean there's blood in the main event of WrestleMania. In the lines. <sighs> With that being said, WrestleMania <laughs> week is going to be awesome. Um Saturday has been um, awesome up to this point. Saturday NXT Stand and Deliver is at eleven o'clock uh, Central, twelve Eastern. It's gonna be a fucking <coughs> banger. Uh, the main event is a non-title match with Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Co-main is Ilya Dragunov and can't remember the other guy's name. The other guy, but still. Uh, but the main event <clears throat> is Carmelo Hayes and. Trick Williams, which we will see um, one of them on the Monday after. Hopefully, this year, if you remember last year correctly, Monday night after WrestleMania last year was hot trash. Oh, 100%. And we need a big Monday <clears throat> after WrestleMania. So it looks like we're getting a where the fuck is the card? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's not a whole lot out there. Trick versus Mello. Yep. Dragon off versus Tony D'Angelo. Versus Tony D'Angelo. Okay. Yep. And then the NXT, women's NXT women's is Lyra Valkyria yep. versus Roxanne Perez. Yep. North American champion. Dude, he's Oba, huge. Oba Femi. He's huge. Versus Dijak versus Josh Briggs. Yep. Uh, then they just announced NXT tag will be Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Well, they just they just announced the next one. Uh, laugh from last night. A six woman tag match: Thea Hale, Kalani Jordan, and Fallon Henley versus J.C. Jane, Kiana. Kiana James and Izzy Dame. Mm -hmm. And then we've got <clears throat> Joe Gacy versus the chairman. Yep. Perfect 10. Yep. That's what Ty they, Dillinger. That's what they announced literally on Tuesday. And that is it. So 
Um, it's it's going to be a really good show. I'm excited That's for this whole trick, weekend. Trick and Mellow, it's going to be great. Dude. It's going to be a great show. So um, that is the podcast. That is everything. Um, like we said, uh, everything will be linked in the bio for Dubby, for the shop. Uh, you watch WrestleMania's on Peacock. So go get Peacock. It's literally dirt cheap. It really is. Um, with that being said, we say this every single week. We would, no one asked us to do this. We did it. And now we have people watching us and actually have expectations to do things now. Really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of odd. So um, we thank you so very, 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 very much. Please like and subscribe. Share this with your friends. Share this with people everywhere. That's the only way we can keep doing this. Please like and subscribe on all platforms tiktok instagram twitter uh youtube share it share it everywhere please and then if you buy the merch take a picture dm us that's the best way to be able to know what we got going from there uh like we say every single week we bid you adieu we thank you and you uh good night and bang We have made such amazing progress on this podcast journey and are pumped to share our first sponsor with you guys tonight, Dubby Energy. Dubby is on a mission to change the game and create a better future for energy drinks, and we are so excited to partner with them. Dubby is your taste buds favorite energy drink that comes with all the good stuff and none of the crash. Formulated with vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including their patented NeuroFactor. Dubby gives you clean energy and laser focus without any fillers, maltodextrin, or anti official colors. Just mix one scoop with eight ounces of cold water and you're ready to tackle the, whatever the day throws at you. Even better, Dubby ships worldwide. So whatever corner of the world you're listening to us from, you can enjoy it too. With some awesome flavors and growing following, see what all the buzz is about and get on board with the clean energy movement. Try it today with our exclusive promo code available to all GQ podcast listeners with the promo code of GQPOD10. Once again, it is GQPOD10. Do better with Dubby.